another uh, Monday Q right here. It's uh, uh, Johnny Dean and the Brain Trust, Boomer's Brain Trust. We're here again once uh, once again from Professor Plum after the bottom of the hour. So if you have any money questions, you can call right then. Right now, though, we do have our Money Answers guy, Jordan Goodman, on the line with us uh, talking about a couple of different things. Hello, Jordan. Great to be with you, John. Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm watching 60 Minutes last night, and I actually took some notes because I knew yes. I was going to do that. Uh, right. My, Michael Lewis. Now, I, I wasn't aware. Supposedly, this book he's written was sort of anticipated oh, yeah. uh, by, by a lot of people. Uh, in, in case anybody missed it, well, I'll let you fill, fill people in, Jordan, but a fascinating story. And frankly, not a whole, not 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 surprising to me at all. What do you think? Well, I don't think the overall thing is surprising. I think some of the details may be surprising. But okay. basically, the idea, the bottom line is, he thinks that the stock market is rigged against the small investor uh, by these high frequency traders. Now, high frequency traders are uh, trading stocks literally by the millions, literally in the milliseconds, not the seconds, yes. milliseconds. Yes. And um, they don't care what it is; they're just buying and selling like crazy and this is 50 to 70 percent of the volume on the stock exchange these days. I mean, well, this is the way most trading is done. Well, it, it, it's true. Now, now this guy Brad Katsuyama, who is with the uh, Royal Bank of Canada, would notice right. that his trades would would they, half of them would go through at the price, and then the other half would be some price that was slightly higher than that. So and this is what's called front running. That it, is what's is called the high, front the high frequency traders could see his trades coming exactly and would get ahead, buy it, and then when his his order would come in. Uh, it would push the price up a little bit. We're talking about pennies here. But if you're doing millions and millions of shares, pennies do add up. They, and they were doing this for every trader on Wall Street. You know, Goldman Sachs, right. name, everybody. Everybody. The they laid thing. $300 million worth of fiber optic cable. Just and that to paid get off big time. A okay, the reason of that they have all this fiber optic cable is they're trying to get as close, physically as close as possible to where the right. exchanges have their uh, kind of computer centers so that there's less time uh, literally to go for, right, right. from next door as opposed to going down the street a little bit. So and that gives them that extra millisecond to be able to buy and sell these things. So what, what they, they they knew what you were buying and, and, and jumped in line in front of, of you. Yes. They, I they mean, knew a, is, is meaning there's a human involved. There was no human involved. Oh, no, it's, it's, absolutely. It's in a fact, computer it, seeing it and acting on it literally in milliseconds. That's it, right. It, it, the, the, the quote that I wrote down, the complexity of the algorithm disguise, disguises what's happening. Nobody right. could figure it out, yet at the same time, uh, this is what's happening. Front-running, which of course is, is illegal, except in this case, I guess. Well, front-running, uh, the normal kind of front-running is you know a trade is coming. Right. And you uh, buy ahead of it. Like, say your broker, you know, you, you're going to buy a you know, million shares of IBM or something, and it might move the price. Um, and so you go and buy the shares in advance of that, and when your purchase comes in, it moves up the price. That's the theory of front-running. But this is done on a massive basis, um, electronically, uh, literally automatically, with all these computers. So there are all these high-frequency traders out. Now, the, the argument that high-frequency traders would make is they provide lots of liquidity, and the market trades much better with them than without them, <laughs> and that kind of thing. So, you know, that's, that's, but basically, they're yeah. taking a penny here, a penny there, times millions, and uh, a three hundred million dollar investment in fiber optic cable is absolutely nothing. They're they're making billions in these things. And, and you know, I think people might look at it and say, okay, well, half of the uh, you know, I want to buy X Y Z stock at twenty five dollars, and it wound up being twenty five dollars and five cents, something like that. You know, and and somebody it, it might doesn't affect the individual that much, but I think it's part of the uh, general skepticism of the market. Yeah, it, is, it, is it rigged against me? And the answer is yes, it is. I mean, there's no way. An institution, never mind individual, can go up against these computers right. uh, that are trading this fast with this much information. And it's not only front running. The other thing they do is they trade in advance of news. Okay, there have been a lot of reports recently. They'll get press releases on uh, consumer confidence. You know, some economic number that comes out literally one second before it's released, and they've already traded like ten million times in that one second. Uh, how, how can they do that on news? Because somebody has to look at it and decide. No, 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 no. It's, no? it's all programmed in. No, no. There's no human necessary. So the news comes in from somewhere and it's 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 interpreted a, by a conference board program. releases consumer conference number, and if it hits this, you do this. If it hits this, you do that. It's just automatically programmed to act no matter what. There's no human intervention. You, you know, you can't have human intervention in one second, right? Right. And it, it just does it. Bang. 
and then they ask questions later. You know, it's uh, shoot first, ask questions later. Well, you know, this is one of those pro one of those issues I think where you say, oh gosh darn it, here we go again. Certainly doesn't help Wall Street's image. Doesn't help them from a PR standpoint. But once That's again, sure. you kind of as a consumer, you say, ah, I can't do anything about it. So you're telling well, the me what the is, problem it, it is, and I, there's no solution. There's a lot of people that are still not in the stock market, John, and they've missed out on an enormous rally for the last five years here. And I mean, part of it was the fall of 2008 and the bailing of the banks and all that happened then. But I think there is a general uh, skepticism of the market. Remember, it was a few years ago we had the flash crash yeah. where the, the Dow fell 1,000 mm -hmm. points in about two minutes. Um, that was all high-frequency trading. And it was probably a uh, wrong high-frequency trading. <laughs> um, the fat but finger it just or whatever makes they people call it. like, what's going to happen next? And it keeps them out of the market. There's tons of money in cash, in CDs, in money market funds, earning zero. Uh, just out of fear of this. So it, it does have yeah. an impact, I think. Yeah, well, you're, you're right. And as I said, the PR doesn't help either. All right, so now today's a, a deadline of some sorts. Right. Now it's a soft deadline. I don't know if it's considered a hard deadline for Obamacare. There are no the hard ACA. deadlines for Obamacare. No. So, so, so what, what, I mean, what technically happens at midnight tonight? What technically happens is if you don't have insurance by midnight tonight, uh, you will be paying a penalty. Uh, in the first year, it's $95 or 1% of adjusted gross income. It goes up in, in future years. But there's so many exemptions and excuses, and <laughs> if, you, if you say you tried to get on to the site before now and couldn't complete it, they'll probably let you off the, the hook for that. If you say you have a hardship, which is whatever you say is a hardship, you can get off for that. I mean, it's, this is about the softest deadline I've ever seen, actually. Well, and, and I guess you're on the honor system is what they said, that you go on the yes. website, and if there's a, there's a box, and I haven't checked this, but I think there's a box on there, and you just click it and says, I'm, you know, it says, I, tried. I, I made a good, yeah, yeah, I was, I, the word they used was stymied. I don't know what that, you know. If that <laughs> That's actually, a technical term, yes. It is, yeah, it, yeah I was stymied by the, by the uh, complexity of all this, or I couldn't get on, and they were having more problems again today, I guess, with the, with, That's with the right. website That's right, the website's itself, been having so. trouble today. But, I mean, the point is, you should be insured, uh, mm -hmm. even w no matter what the deadline is, and there are these four levels now, platinum, gold, mm -hmm. uh, silver, and bronze. And there are different deductibles. I mean, the whole thing, my strategy is to get as high a deductible as I can get and therefore the lowest premium I can get. That's just my strategy because I'm basically healthy. I'd rather keep the money in my pocket than have a high premium, low deductible, and have the money in the insurance company's pocket. Now, if I'm sick all the time, then those are the people who are going to probably get the um, higher premium but higher lower deductible plans. But for most people who are pretty well healthy and not have huge medical expenses, that's what I would do. The strategy I use specifically is called medical repricing. Uh -huh. And there is a website for that, medicalrepricing.com. And the idea is your everyday bills are repriced 20, 30, 40 percent off, depending on what it is, do doctors, drugs, hospitals, and so on. But you have a high deductible and may you not hit that deductible. I mean, I've had a high one for many years. I've never hit it. And, and that's the way I plan on doing it that way until I reach Medicare, which is another few years. To me, people waste a lot of money paying high premiums uh, for covering, you know, Band-Aids and little things. <laughs> yeah, I don't I would even rather wanna, cover big I, things. I don't even like to think about it. I was looking again what I'm paying per month, and I thought, when was the last time I was even at the doctor? But, you know. Right. This is, You're paying this too is much, crazy. John. You should yeah. get a higher yeah. deductible, am, am lower I gonna, premium, uh, and uh, have Dr. Plum invest your money. <laughs> am I going to act on it? Probably not. This is just how I am. Uh, moneyanswers.com. Jordan Goodman. All the money answers and all the resources are right there, right? Absolutely. I'm glad to, to get emails from you folks all the time. I'm always glad to help them. All right. Jordan, thanks very much. We'll talk to you again next Monday. Uh, thank you, John. All right. Take care. We'll get updates on that ACA thing, too, by the way, from Jordan next time. We'll see what happens. Any penalties? I don't know. Uh, Brain Trust panel coming back. Uh, Johnny Dean and the Boomers Brain Trust. We are back right after this.